Civic Auditorium in Hanford, California, and welcome to Best of the West! I am your host and commentator for the evening. My name is AJ Kirsch, known within some circles as Brosive Joe Brody, and the man Dwayne The Rock Johnson declared Rock the Promo Champion. And it is my pleasure to be your host tonight where you can find the best professional wrestling on this coast or any coast. This is Best of the West Ignition! We are back at Best of the West Ignition. AJ Kirsch and Alexander G. Bernard at ringside. Let's send it to Davey Dangerously. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Official in charge of this contest, referee Nup Nup Johnson. <laughs> Introducing first. From the pyramids of Mexico, weighing in tonight at 196 pounds, El Diablo Azteca! Here comes El Diablo Azteca. A flair for the dramatic with the entrance. Notably without his tag team partner, Wild Horse, this evening. Wild Horse on excursion in Mexico. So I decided to offer him the opportunity for a little single challenge. Well, I don't blame Diablo Azteca for seeking out singles competition here at Best of the West, even though he has been part of a tag team in recent history. Wants to stay as sharp as he possibly can. Checking over Diablo Azteca as we await the arrival of his opponent. And his opponent from Visalia, California, weighing in tonight at 225 pounds, he is the gambler, R.J. Here comes the gambler, R.J. Remington. Another underappreciated gem I've noticed on this roster. A man cut from a very similar cloth to myself. I look forward to what he's able to do with a little greater opportunity handed his way. Remington, very young in his career. Diablo Azteca with the experience advantage and leaping into the ring is Remington. Always a challenge in this mishmash of styles. Does Remington have any experience countering an opponent with Lucha experience? Look at that, sign of sportsmanship. And Diablo Azteca 
somewhat accepting, kind of swatting it away. A lot of sportsmanship this evening. I'm not sure that I like it. We can't, have, we can't be having sportsmanship or honor or dignity or, you know, those are all just... In their own measure. Uh-huh. Beautiful and drag from Remington. That's what I wanted to see. Remington, so far, able to contain Azteca's lucha style. Underneath goes Azteca. Snapmare. Hard to keep up with this luchador. Remington now finds himself face down on the canvas. Arm hooked in. One, two, only two. No doubt that Azteca is as quick as they come. Knows quite a versatile variety of holds. Absolutely, it's hard to predict where El Diablo Azteca is coming from at any given time, as we see right there, but Remington wisely hanging on to the arm drag. The momentum carries him through and he finds himself in control. Impressive, impressive. That's what I wanted to see. Irish whip. Diablo off the ropes. Goes underneath the leapfrog. No look leapfrog that time. And a huge chop takes down the luchador. Chopped him high up on the chest. That stings something fierce, even with his protector. Is that protector even legal, come to think of it? Aztega looking frustrated. It's not often we see him so obviously express frustration. Of course, with that mask on, it's hard to see any cues whatsoever how he's feeling about his match, but clearly expressing some frustration there after that chop. It has been a moment since he's been in singles competition. Perhaps he's used That's to true. this being the moment where he would rely on a partner. Diablo got caught. Innovative maneuver there. Almost a face buster off the second rope. Drives him right into the knee. And a picture of perfect suplex. Beautifully executed. There's two and only two. A Diablo Azteca with an Irish whip for Edmonton reverses. Power slam and a beauty. Cover one, two, and still not enough to put down Diablo Azteca. Finding myself impressed with the power of this Remington. Haven't had a lot of experience seeing his matches in the past, but look at the way he's able to pick up and throw down Azteca. That's a no. Nuck Nuck saying that Diablo Azteca does not give it up. Goes underneath, short on clothesline, almost decapitates Diablo. Another cover, there's two and no, only two. The question becomes, does Azteca have the resilience to withstand this assault all on his own now that he has been a majority tag competitor? Into the corner goes Diablo. Nobody home for RJ Remington. Shot in the buckle, staggers him. Now here comes Azteca. Splash in the corner. And a bulldog to the center of the ring. And he got all of that into the cover. One, two, and only two, says referee Nuck Nuck Johnson. Diablo Azteca now having to dig deep. Catches the boot. There's a dragon screw leg whip. I think Remington might have been trying to go to the outside, got caught by Azteca there. Smart to keep him in the ring, press the advantage while he has it. Diablo Azteca now looks like he's perhaps setting up for the... Standing on the legs, folding the feet up. Looks like he's setting up for the Mexican surfboard. If he can roll him back. And he's there got it all is. this. RJ Remington in a world of hurt, but how long can Azteca keep him balanced there? And shortly after you pointed out, Diablo Azteca loses balance, but the damage was done in very uncompromising position. It's a high risk, high reward hold. Difficult to maintain, but does so much damage while you're in it. 
Irish whip. Hip toss, nope, telegraphed. Diablo lands on his feet, but RJ one step ahead, connects with the neck breaker. Counter for counter. counter. Cover. Two. Kick out at two. But it's Azteca running out of steam. Did you see that kick out? Not as much force as earlier in the match. No, he barely got that shoulder up. Diablo out the back. Kick to the midsection. Going for, oh my god, beautiful. Float over, inverted DDT. There's two and three. Diablo Azteca victorious. Here is your winner. Diablo Azteca victorious, but I gotta say, I'm impressed with the showing from RJ Remington. RJ Remington coming out here with an impressive near victory, but Diablo Azteca, deep cover, strong maneuvers, strong lucha style. Diablo Azteca showing why he is the established presence in Best of the West. And look at that sign of respect from R.J. Remington to Diablo Azteca. Hey, wait a second! Spine buster out of nowhere. That's what I wanted to see. I had a feeling something like that was coming. R.J. Remington started off at best in the West with a mean streak. That mean streak continues right here on Ignition. That's, that's. I am make a statement. And Diablo Azteca is seething in the ring. We'll be right back with more Best of the West Ignition. Best of the West fans, this is J.R. Kratos, and you are now tuned in to Best of the West. Welcome back to Best of the West Ignition. Let's send it over to our ring announcer, Davey Dangerously. The following contest is scheduled for one ball. Official in charge of this contest, referee Wiggles. Uh, excuse me for just one second. complain about my attention, dear myself to the owners. Here you are, 
trying to get your merchandise and your catchphrases for others over. Yeah, man, it's a business. <laughs> kind of a joke. I am Kyle Newport, and uh, Big Show, you need to move that fat finger because you should have announced the undefeated Kyle Newport. This is true. I was part of the team that led him to victory. The reason I'm undefeated is because my master plan works. Did he call David Davidson? Bobby Johnson is with us. us. And my monster team of Abomination and Chesapeake and Pool are going to once and for all destroy the human Pogo stick and the little Pinto. So all you clowns need to do is sit back and enjoy the video. We go out of the way. Human Pogo stick? I like that. I have. I like that. That's a pretty clever way to describe that defective human. Uh, acting Commissioner, am I allowed to swear on this broadcast? Certainly not! It's a family show. Human photo stick. He should be ashamed of himself. You can run Introducing first, making their way to the ring, the team of Jesse the Snake Pool and Amish Johnson! are the things nightmares are made of. Behold, these brutal battling behemoths. Can you stop <laughs> clapping? It's very annoying. I shall clap at the greatness. I am very appreciative of these men. We let it. <laughs> Must love his violent tendencies, don't you? Uh, not particularly. As acting commissioner, are you not concerned for the welfare of your... Uh, here with the likes of Jesse Poole and Amish Johnson. There's, there's a liability waiver when you purchase a ticket. You don't need to worry about it. Oh, it's great. above your head. Look at this intimidating team. This is a team that will shortly be contenders for the tag team championships. I assure you that much. I don't doubt it. Although I gotta say, it's kind of an odd coupling with Kyle Newport here. And their opponents, introducing first from Fresno, California, weighing in tonight at 185 pounds, one size, Danny Rocket! And here comes fun size, Danny Rocket, high fiving almost every one of these fans here at Hanford. Last time I was in the ring with him, he attempted to collapse my ribcage. That is not a very sporting man. Don't even get me started on this next one. What do you mean? What about? 
what could you possibly have to say about Hip Hop Harry that would be? Oh, I love the song. And his tag team partner from all in Texas, winging tonight at 225 pounds, Hip Hop Harry! Sit down. Sit down, AGB. You're acting commissioner, you're a commentator, you have no reason to I'm just up keeping right my guard up. He's a tricky soul. Frankly, he has no business being here. Really? He has been on the Best of the West roster for, what, the better part of two years now? I think he has every reason to be here. Under the old regime, certainly. But he has no place. He's, he's a defective unit. He has no business being a part of this roster. And look at these cows of Hamburg paying and hoeing along with him. That's what you get if you lay hands on Amish Johnson. Well, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think Hip Hop Harry and Fun Size have a, uh, an uphill battle ahead of them. With Amish Johnson, Jesse the Snake Pool, and that tool at ringside, Kyle Newport. By tool, I will assume you mean effective strategist. No, I mean like kind of a douche. Jesse Poole and Hip Hop Harry starting off here. Just kick his leg out from under him. Works every time. Jesse Poole backing Hip Hop Harry into the corner. Contest of strength, no question. Jesse Poole. Well, I feel like strength and leverage will automatically go to the person with all of their limbs. I feel like that's fair. Hey! Harry laying hands on Kyle Newport. I did not agree to that. I do. I'd love to see it again. Takes his eyes off the prize. Now Jesse Poole is able to lay in these deep shots into the throat and face. Irish whip him up Harry hard into the buckle. Able to move out of the way. Kick right to the chest. Snapmare. Off the ropes. And a splash. One. Only a one count. We are early into this contest. Yes, he might have misgaged his jump, hit him a little low. If he got him higher, he might have had better leverage for the pinfall. Club and forearm to the back of Jesse Poole. Hip Hop Harry tags in fun size Danny Rocket. Off the ropes, ducks the double clothesline. Taking the wheels out from underneath Jesse. He hit him with a stump. That's disgusting. One, two and only two, says referee Wiggles. There should be a bylaw, no hitting with stumps. It's not a foreign object, it's, it's totally legal. What's the it's uncool. One, two, you're uncool. Two count. And that tool bag back up on the ring apron again. Has no reason to be there. He was just inspecting, make sure the leg was clean where it was landing. Oh, is that what he's doing? Indeed. Huge clothesline taking down fun size. Jesse Poole seizing the opportunity and making the most of it. Jesse Poole is such a hard hitter, such a smart competitor. Works very, very slowly, ensures he will control the pace like that shot right to the kidneys. The longer he's in there, he meaning fun size, the longer this favors Jesse and Amish. Two absolute monsters, two of the biggest here at Best of the West. It almost feels absurd to call the tag team partner the big man and the tag team with Jesse Poole, yeah. but Amish Johnson is a big man. It's gotta be close to 300 pounds. Jesse Poole probably 250. Now trash talking the referee. I don't know if he realizes this, but he needs the referee to you know, Johnson, signal for the winner. Amish Johnson is a hired gun. He is here to do damage, and he doesn't care how much. Well, he's doing a ton of damage right now to Fun Size. His Fun Size's feet were kicking in the air as he was getting choked in the corner. Whipped to the other side in a huge clothesline. It's a big man's business. Right 
right to the face, and Fun Size may be out cold. Fun Size just slumped in his seat. Cover. One, two, and no. Only two left shoulder up, but that was barely. close to 2.8, 2.75. Johnson with the choke, taking all the wind out from Fun Size. At this point, he might just be toying with him. Fun Size finds himself in the wrong part of town. You see how Amish just manhandles Fun Size with one hand, pushes him into the corner, pushes him to the ropes. Double elbow right to the chin. One, two, and no, again only two. But as I said before, the longer Fun Size is in there, the more this match sways in the favor of Amish Johnson and Jesse the Snake and a cheap shot to Hip Hop Harry. <laughs> that never gets old. Hit him in his face again. Wow, astute advice. Hit him in the face again. When it works, it works. That's why you make the big bucks. Irish whip, Fun Size off the ropes. Sunset flip attempt. Jesse Poole's not going anywhere. Poole too big. Oh, misses with the closed fist. Got nothing but canvas. Fun size fighting for his life. Fired up, found that second wind. Ducks the clothesline, does fun size. But got caught into a sidewalk slam. And Jesse Poole's on a rampage right now. Cover one. Two, and again only two. Here's Fun Size might have been looking for a Hurricane Rana, but lost too much wind, lost the core strength. Jesse Poole able to hold him there and just drop it flat on his head. Two, three. Oh, come on, up and choke, listen up. Jesse Poole just complete disregard for the rules, choking the life out of Fun Size Danny Rock. complete disregard, he broke on four. Power slam perhaps has him set. No, he was going for snake eyes, I think. Ducks the big boot. Fun size, able to get a boot up into the face of Jesse Poole. The tornado DDT finds its mark. Dropped him right on his head. That was a disgusting landing. And after dealing out most of the punishment this matchup, Jesse Poole now finds himself on the defense looking for the tag. Fun size, he's got his sights set on his tag team partner. Oh, he's no. got don't, to make the tag. Don't bring this there defect in. Here comes Hip Hop Harry. Punch him in the face. There's a stunner. Johnson collapses. One, two. Only two, says referee Wiggles. To the best of my knowledge, that's the first time we've seen a stunner tonight. Takes out the knee. Oh my god, big boot right in the face. Right of fun between size. the eyes. But Harry's ready for him. I hate that. Stump right to the face. Jesse Poole rolls out of the ring, and hip hop Harry is feeling it right now. All shot based offense banned. Ha! Newport has his crutch, he's useless without it. <laughs> oh, the crutch to the back. Referee's back is turned, gets rid of the evidence. That's what you get when you bring these defective units into the world of professional wrestling. And Amish Johnson, the choke slam, center of the ring. It is Gotta academic. There's two and three. Here are your winners, Jesse the Snake Pool and Amish Johnson. I'm sure you're very proud. Hard by fought victory. Applause. Hard fought victory. And now, I believe Johnson's going after the Wait other a leg. Toxic Trent. Toxic Trent is here. He's got a chair. Chair versus axe battle. Flip size. Trent manages to save off Amish Johnson from cutting off Harry Henderson's other leg. Unfortunately. Jesse Poole trying to remove the chair, but Trent, Trent ready for him. The troops are rallied up around Hip Hop Harry, who is still holding his back in the ring. I'm amazed this is not completely broken down. Fun size with the crutch, toxic Trent with a chair. Jesse Poole is livid. Amos Johnson has his 
axe with him. I told you, I told you how this one was a brilliant strategist and how that strategy paid off for them this evening. These, this tag team is on the rise, my friend would be a strong word, but the Patriots. Felt like a riot was about to break out. Tensions are running hot in Hanford tonight at Best of the West Ignition. Wiggles pleading with these three to head to the back. Hip Hop Harry finally getting back up to his feet. And something tells me this issue is far from over. We'll be right back with more Best of the West. Play music for losers. He lost. He lost. Don't play his music. He lost because he's a loser. Because he doesn't belong here. See, it's annoying, isn't it? He's not it's a real annoying. wrestler. He's a defective right eunuch with no business here. A eunuch? That's more information than I'd care to know. I would love to know how you know that. You know what? In fact, I'd rather not. Always have to take things in the dirtiest yeah. possible direction, don't you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Referee Wiggles, and you're watching Best of the West Ignition. to kick off Best of the West Ignition. And here it comes the first the challenger from the last house on the left. Weighing it tonight at two bucks. He is the reject, Bison Braddock. 
Bryson Braddock, another one of these young talents with a great deal of potential. Someone who I felt was not getting a fair shake under the pinion machine, so I decided to grant him an opportunity this evening. Well, he's one of the most physically impressive up and coming talents here at Best of the West, built like a, well, I was gonna say something that I probably can't say on the air, but he just show. put together and a brick-ish house. Is and what improving I was going to say. every day as well. Built like a brick-ish house. But he's gonna have his hands full with his opponent here tonight. Does he realize it's flu season? Why is he touching this many hands? Is he, is he attempting his, to spread disease? He's showing his respect for the fans, something that you are clearly not familiar with. Fans should be showing me respect. I gave him this matchup. Thank you. I'm sure a thank you card is in the mail. No mistake. All, all kidding aside, though, I am very much looking forward to this match. Bison Braddock always competes as if he has something to prove. Virgil Flynn, what he lacks in size, he makes up for in explosive athleticism. This should be a fantastic match. Not my preferred champion, but I can take nothing away from him. He is the man who defeated me in the match that ultimately cost my, he cost me my job in our first go around here at Best of the West. So I can pretty much uh, kiss goodbye any chance that you can be unbiased. Right? I am perfectly unbiased. I do not see where these accusations are coming from. We'll see as the match unfolds, I guess. <laughs> Officially underway, Virgil Flynn with a handshake to Bison Braddock, who accepts the West Coast Championship is on the line. Not why I picked you. I picked you to be violent, Braddock. Quick roll up. There's two. And Virgil Flynn almost stole it just mere seconds after the bell rang. Not to mention Virgil Flynn managing to stay on the offense after the kickout. You see how quickly he moved into that rear waist lock. I think Bison Braddock outweighs Virgil by, I would guess, maybe 40 or 50 pounds. Clearly the bigger, the stronger of the two, but Virgil Flynn, more experienced, quicker. Not to mention more experienced at being against larger opponents. Almost always the smaller opponent in the match. That's must true. Say. Virgil Flynn is no stranger to competing as if he is the underdog, but as soon as you underestimate Virgil Flynn, that could be all it takes to put your shoulders on the mat for a count of three. There's one count. Mahi Stroll Cradle, not exactly what I expected out of Braddock in this match. Well, don't let his size and aggressive demeanor fool you. He can wrestle with the best of them. He's not some Crow Magnum brute in there. He has a very impressive technical game as well. Ask him, ask him. Now in that hammer lock. There you go. Use those elbows, elbows to the temple, trying to create some separation. Instead, reverses the hammer lock into one of his own. Virgil though finds a headlock. And the proper thing, bringing that center of gravity down to bring down the head to get that headlock. But Braddock right back to these rights. Virgil hangs on. Not where Braddock wants to be. Out to the outside goes Virgil. Taking out the rejects. Look at this showboat Virgil friend though. 
slapping all these hands. These people don't care about you. Really, they seem pretty excited when he does it. They're all bonies. Virgil Flynn in control. Bison Braddock back to the corner. What? He's got to be careful when he's in the corner. He finds himself on his back anywhere near the corner, and Virgil hits that patented 450. It's as good as always. Belted sternum crushes. Virgil shaking off the effects of that 10 punch, but allowing Bison Braddock just a moment to recover, and for a second there, it looked like the tide was about to turn. Virgil finds himself back in control. Bison Braddock up and over. Oh my god, look at the strength. Hoists Virgil up on his shoulders like he's nothing. Electric chair! That's Virgil lands on the back of his head in the center of the ring. There's one, two, and only two. It's so difficult to avoid landing on the back of your head with that maneuver. All that force comes right down on you, your full body weight. Well done by Braddock. Braddock, though, has to keep the fight on Virgil Flynn. The longer he waits to inflict further punishment, the more of a chance Virgil Flynn has. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, do that. Just do that more. I'm sure That's he'll... what I said. Punch them in the face. It always works. <laughs> it's a wrestling match until someone gets popped in the mouth. Oh, and a kick to the rope. Ring awareness by Braddock. Growing smarter every day. As you said, not a mindless brute. No. Very smart, very calculating. There's a chop right to the chest. Son. Thick hands on Braddock. Braddock with an Irish whip. Ducks the clothesline, does Virgil trying a backslide. I don't know if he's strong enough to get Bison into position. Difficult when your opponent outweighs you to this extent, but he's got his weight turn. down. Gets him down. One, two, only two. Bison Braddock up to his feet. Makes this is what he the drop kick takes him down. But first on his feet is Bison, even if in the corner. Almost fell into the trap of going into Virgil's speed game. Virgil can out quick anybody on the best of the rest of the roster. Virgil's fine first into the turnbuckle. Gets a boot up. Bison Braddock sent reeling. Virgil on that second rope. Caught in mid-air. Look at the strength of Bison. Why they call it high risk. Sit out, slam, one, two, and only two. Virgil a little over eager. Thought he had maybe done more damage to Braddock than he had. Braddock still able to keep his wits about him and catch him with that nasty slam. I think Virgil forgetting his size for a second. Probably only around 160 pounds or so. It is a Easy pickings for Bison Braddock. He's a petite pugilist. That is undoubted. I'm not hating your alliteration. Just everything else. Quite the words, man. You must make. To the cover, one. And only one count that time. Virgil making a statement, kicking out before the two. That knee to the temple was absolutely disgusting as well. I'm somewhat amazed that Flynn managed to kick out when he did. There's a gut wrench. And a suplex. Feel the Sheer force strength. Of Two, and again only two. See, some people will just release at the top. He drove Flynn all the way into the mat. He did, he did not let gravity do the work. Bison putting in the work in everything he does, driving Virgil into the canvas, and Virgil fighting for his life right now, and indeed, his West Coast Championship. Shots in the gut, seemingly taking a lot of wind out of Braddock. He's already reeling against the ropes. Oh God, that. Headbutt right to the bridge of the nose. That's that vicious side I like to see out of Braddock. He has it in him. Doesn't need to be so sporting all the time. Maybe that'll improve his win-loss record. Oh my god! Short arm clothesline turn Virgil inside out. There's two, and again only two. Not just inside out, it looked to me he landed on his face on the mat. Talk about a double impact. Not only the impact of the clothesline, but the impact of landing on the canvas. Absolutely, that was a double whammy. Crowd rallying behind Virgil, but Bison Braddock first to his feet, measuring for his shot. Clothesline in the corner. Virgil is near lifeless. And a neckbreaker in the center of the ring. 
wisely, immediately makes the cover. One, two, and again, only two. And Bison, though, clearly frustrated. He's got to keep his energy and focus it on Virgil Flynn. He's got the right emotion. He needs to get angry. He needs to get mean with Virgil Flynn. Virgil Flynn's not the champion for nothing. You need to find that extra gear if you intend to put a man of his resiliency away. Virgil Just as I spoke. Mule kick. Hey, that was almost a super kick right there. Braddock has not left his feet from these disgusting kicks. Heads is a takeover. Braddock thrown off his game. Placed in the center of the ring, right where Virgil wants him, and it might be time to go swimming. Cannonball! Cannonball, he called for it. Bison got the knees up. Well scouted by Bison Braddock. Well, well done indeed. Braddock now has the upper hand, and you can tell he's feeling the control. German suplex, one, two, and only two. A picture-perfect bridge from Braddock to Virgil Flynn. Just, what is it going to take to put this man away? Question all of his opponents ask at one time or another. The heart in Virgil Flynn is unparalleled. Off the ropes. Braddock face first into that second turnbuckle. Virgil puts him right where he wants him. He could be going for that 450. He got it! And he's not done! Calls for the cannonball! He got it! Cover! One, two! Virgil retains the West Coast Championship. Here's your winner. Bison Braddock, quite above what we've seen him in the past, but he fell for the trap of giving Virgil Flynn too much distance when you give him space to work. The man can do incredible things. Nobody delivers that 450 splash any sweeter than flying Virgil Flynn. It has carried him all the way to the best of the West West Coast Championship. And that championship stays around the waist of Flying Virgil Flynn tonight in Hanford. He makes it one step closer to the two-year anniversary with the championship, but will he survive? What's in store for him then? Bison Braddock has nothing to be ashamed of. A hell of a match, but at the end of the day, it was his shoulders on the canvas for the one, two, three, your winner, and still best of the West, West Coast champion, flying Virgil Flynn. We'll be right back with more Best of the West Ignition. I have sanitizer if you need it.
talk to you. Right now, you're watching Best of the West Wrestling, and it's Eli Drake. Don't be a dummy. Keep it right here. That's not an insult. That is just a fact of life. Yeah. Welcome back to Best of the West Ignition. It is now time for your main event of the evening. Let's send it to the ring announcer, Davey Dangerously. Following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is your main event of the evening, and it is for the Best of the West Heavyweight Championship. best to unseat Money Bone, and whom better than the warlord of weird, Sin Bodhi. Sin Bodhi is swimming in his own madness. How do you prepare for an opponent that doesn't know himself what he will do moment to moment? Ha! It's brilliant! Well, if anybody can go toe to toe with the warlord of weird when it comes to mind games and theatrics, it's the best of the West heavyweight champion. Mind is fit for human consumption. 
Steven Landos looks like he's about to crap his pants. Funny Bone absolutely dismantled referees at the last best of the West ignition taping, which is, I guess, explains Landis's hesitation. Are you ready to get weird? Funny Bone, I mean, he's, he's still somewhat of a mystery to me, but for that matter, so is Sin Bo D. The warlord of weird. Taking on the demigod of death. We are underway, the best of the West heavyweight championship hangs in the balance and this close to our huge two year anniversary pay-per-view, I've got to think. Both of these men would want to go into the biggest event of best of the West history exactly. as champion. But who wants it more? I don't know. I would love to know why Sin Bodhi ended up the way he did. I mean, looking at this man, you immediately have a ton of questions. I feel if he wrote an autobiography, it'd be in gibberish. Yeah. Or tongues. Neither Twitching. One, what is wrong with his nervous system? Neither one of these men are backing down, staring each other dead in the eyes. Blew to the midsection, suckered him in with the test of strength. And now a headlock on Funny Bone. Shoulder tackle, but back on his feet is Funny Bone. Couple drop downs, Sin Bodhi steps over him. Another shoulder tackle. Into the cover. Funny Bone just slinks up to his feet. And if that doesn't give you the shivers when you see it. Nothing will. You're dead inside. Then again, we're talking about Sin Bodhi. That's true. They both, I mean, they both, are they really even alive? Are they dead? I don't know what's going on with these two guys. Right hand well placed into the throat of Funny Bone. Funny Bone, so dangerous with those strikes, so accurate, so well placed. Sin Bodhi on the receiving end of a kick to the midsection, then to the chest, and now the back of the head. Down he goes and outside the ring. I wish to jump back to a moment ago earlier. We saw Sin Bodhi headbutt Funny Bone, and he didn't even flinch when he no. did it. Sin Bodhi on the no, cutting off Funny Bone. Saw it coming, punched him right in the jaw. These two, it's not the and first then, time. Funny Bone sends him right to the outside. Suicide dive, and Funny Bone lands on his feet. Funny Bone feeling the momentum now, looking to follow through. Sin Bodhi again creating distance. And Funny Bone again with a suicide dive. Both competitors go down again. This is not the first time these two have done battle. They're quite experienced, quite knowledgeable of one another's tactics. But with two such unpredictable competitors, it's unclear what advantage that exactly might be. No, I mean, when one competitor has the advantage in their mind, the other might be at a disadvantage. Chop right to the chest. Sin Bodhi needing to move. Straight rights from Funny Bones, rocking it. And that one takes him down. Well placed shot right to the face. Boot caught. Whoa, just sends him over the top. Sin Bodhi back to his feet. Back in the ring and takes down Funny Bone with a huge clothesline. Clothesline him right in the jaw and Funny Bone collapses to the ground. There's two and only two. But how much damage has Funny Bone already done to Sin? Sin Bodhi needing to take a moment to recover before he could go for that pinball. 
knee right to the face of Funny Bone. Sinbo D, I don't know about him, man. He strikes me as the type that like grew up in absolute darkness as a kid or something. Just nobody, like nobody there, hugged him, no, nobody checked on him. Just well, he was trained by Jake the Snake Roberts. If that won't corrupt a man yeah. in the head, I don't know what possibly can. I mean, he, he already had to be some kind of corrupt, though, before he even got trained, though. I imagine there were screws loose to count. There were screws loose quite early on for At this Sin point, Bodhi. there might be no screws left. No. Or they're just jagged and rusty. Stripped of all sanity. Right. Smart strategy, however. Simbody does carry the weight advantage, so by locking Funny Bone Let's in the deep, it will be challenging for him to fight out from under Bodhi's body weight. Simbody, the bigger of the two. Funny Bone, though, gets to the ropes, and Landis starting his count. Clothesline misses, and now Funny Bone with a forearm right to the face. And the two of them. Back and forth, Funny Bone regaining his wind. The box of the ears from Sin Bodhi, that unorthodox offense paying off. Chop to the chest, headbutt. And again, he doesn't even flinch after it. And a well-placed punches right to the temple of Funny Bone. Gives him an inverted atomic drop for his troubles, and now we're bursting, turning the tables on the Warlord of Weird. Sin Bodhi, ready for it. What is, Sin Bodhi has Funny Bone folded up, kicked him right in the head. With his head tucked in the buckle like that, that could break his neck. Very dangerous maneuver. Zinbo D, jackknife pinning combination. He got all of it too. There's one, two, and only two. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a quick commercial break. We will be right back with the conclusion of this match at Best of the West Ignition. Welcome back to Best of the West Ignition. Funny Bone in control for the moment with what looked like a savage senton right in the chest cavity of Sin Bodhi. As a reminder, this is your superior main event and you are welcome for it. That's this right, because you, you made the match. Exactly. Headbutt to the face and Sin Bodhi may be out cold. And this is for the best of the West Heavyweight Championship. Funny Bone feeling the retention. Looks like he's heading up top. Funny Bone going up top. Thought he was going to go for the Demon Stomp. No. Mood Salt, but nobody home. Yeah. Sin Bodhi, just a seasoned veteran, knew with that much you distance he had weird. to get out of the way. And Sin Bodhi you says it's weird. about to get weird. You want it? That would mean infinite, terrifying things. Just chokeslam himself on his own opponent. One, two, and no, wait a second. Reversed. One. Two and another two count. Going for it again. Nobody home for that one. Went to the well one too many times. Funny Bone creating some distance, either trying to recover his breath. Kick right to the chest. Elbow to the jaw. Sin Bodhi's rock. Clothesline takes down Sin Bodhi. Another one. Few people hit as hard as Funny Bone. I'm not sure Funny Bone's people. Drop kick takes down Sin Bodhi. Fair point. Boot to the face. Funny Bone looking to pick up the pace, but every time Sin Bodhi manages to shut him down. Found the dome of Sin Bodhi with that kick and a Death Valley driver. Cover. One, two, and no. Kicks out of the Death Valley driver. Sin Bodhi dropped right on the back of his head. If there were any brain cells still rattling around in there, they may be lost cause. 
Funny Bone, the defending best of the West heavyweight champion, finds himself in control. Irish whipping in the corner. Sid Bode gets a knee up. Jawjacker running right into it. A thrust to the throat sends Funny Bone to the corner. Kick to the midsection, and Funny Bone now. Wait a minute. Bode Sin catches Bode. him. What's he gonna do? Tries to roll him over into a sunset flip, and Sin Bode just sat down on him. One, two, and only a two count. I'm amazed Funny Bone managed to kick out of that. That was all of Sin Bode's weight, full force on his chest. Should have pushed all the air out. Somehow finds a way to muster up. Funny Bone's notorious for kicking out when nobody thinks he would. That's the reason why he has been champion as long as he has. He actually won his championship here in this very building, looking to repeat his past success. Punch right to the face. Chop to the knee. First time I think I've ever seen a chop to the knee. Funny Bone, his face. Peeling off. Shoves Sin Bodhi down. Oh, wait a minute. He's got him. Right where he wants him. Could be time for the demon stomp. Calling for it. Nobody home. Sin Bodhi avoiding the contact. Wait a minute. Landis looks terrified. It's not the first time Bunny Bones put a referee in harm's way to win a match. We'll put it that way. Oh! And Landis is dead again. I'll allow it. You'll allow it? You said something rather rude to me earlier. You're a horrible boss. There's no referee. Simbo D. Can we get a referee, please? Just power bomb Funny Bone into Steven Landis. Owners, please know this is not a failure on my part. And Funny Bone is just mauling Simbo D. Oh! Double underhook DDT calls it One, Lula Bell. two, three. We could have a new champion right now. Where's all referees? I don't think any of the referees want to come out because they're worried about getting destroyed by Funny Bone and or Sin Bodhi. You have to be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. Where's the referee? You want to go back there and uh, get a ref? I totally, I can take it from here. Wait a minute. Funny Bone. No. Again, there's no referee at all. What? Landis! But meanwhile, these two are brutalizing each other. Once the referee's Funny bone out here. Just ripped the rest of his face off. Once the referee's out here, they want to make sure they're the last man standing. Funny bone is up. Perched. Coiled. Demon stomp! Two Cover! Wait a minute, here comes Mike Rain, the California black sheep, Mike Rain. He will face Funny Bone. Oh my God! He will face Funny Bone at the two year anniversary pay per view in a cage. He's been saying this whole time that it's his destiny to become the best of the West heavyweight champion. But he just he, pile drove Funny Bone into oblivion. He's putting, putting the title at risk. If Funny Bone loses here, does Mike Green still get a title opportunity? What is Mike Rain doing? I think Mike Rain wants to make sure Funny Bone doesn't even make it to the two year anniversary. No, if he hits that same pile driver on those. No. Oh my God! On the chair. And that's it. Referee Steven Landis is calling for the bell, and I think that's got to be the disqualification. He's doing it again. Oh my God, not again. Where are the referees? Mike Rain did it in front of the referee deliberately because he wants the best of the West heavyweight championship. This was his plan. Mike Rain is an intelligent man. This was his plan. He saw the title at risk of changing hands. Wanted to make sure he got an opportunity. And Sid Bodie now furious. Mike Rain has cost him his opportunity. 
No contest. Not even a disqualification, but a no contest. Landis has ruled this a no contest. Steven Landis has thrown this match out. It's my first main event. It can't be a no contest. You have to be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. Sin, Sin Bo D has a look on his face like he's about to eat somebody's face. This is chaos. This is chaos. Look at the look on Mike Rain's face, admiring his handiwork. But Sin Bodhi doesn't look like he's finished with Funny Bone either. Mike Rain just came out and laid waste to the best of the West heavyweight champion, making a statement as the biggest show in Best of the West history, the two-year anniversary pay-per-view in Fresno on Saturday, March 17th, looms on the horizon. But what state will the champion be in for that main event? Sin Bo D. This is not the way he wanted to leave Best of the West. He wanted to leave the Best of the West heavyweight champion. But Mike Rain put a stop to that real quick because he's convinced it is Mike Rain's destiny to lay claim to that championship. And here comes some of the wrestlers from the back coming out to check on Funny Bone. Notice none of the referees. None of the referees want to touch him. They're all checking on Funny Bone. Everyone in the back has a great, well, everyone in the back except for Mike Rain, apparently, but virtually the entire locker room has a great deal of respect for Funny Bone. They're out here to check on his well-being, but the story here is that Mike Rain just decimated the best of the West heavyweight champion. And if he can do the same on Saturday, March 17th at Fresno City College, I have to believe we're gonna have a new Best of the West heavyweight champion. It's weird to see Funny Bone helped out of the ring. And this is not gonna sit well with the Best of the West heavyweight champion. For Alexander G. Bernard, this is AJ Kersher ringside. Good night from Hanford. Funny Bone just said he's coming for Mike Rain's death. I would not want to be Mike Rain right now. What? Revenge goes through the mind of the demigod of death. We'll see you next time. Best of the West.